hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we've got part three of our Toys and Joys dump truck and pup trailer build. Well, we're not going to waste a lot of time talking with some introductory thoughts this week. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into the build. And that's all she wrote for this axle, guys, but I want to get this finished off. So if we look here at the drawing, page two, we can see here our front axle spacers. One eighth inch thick material, we need to make two of them one inch in diameter. But again, we have this five sixteenths diameter hole. That's not what I do. It's part and parcel to this axle, so it's going to be a quarter inch hole. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw these out because I want to rough cut them at the scroll saw. So I'm going to take an inch and a quarter circle template. I have some center lines marked out here. We're going to take an inch and a quarter circle template and we are going to mark out our an inch and a quarter circle. All right, so what if you don't have an inch and a quarter circle template? Guys, a quarter inch fender washer, for those of you who don't know, a quarter inch fender washer is an inch and a quarter in diameter. I use these all the time as almost like bushings when I'm turning inch and a quarter uh, sized hubs and that sort of thing on the lathe. So you go inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. So I'm going to draw out two more. I only need two, but personal experience has shown that sometimes these things like to blow apart on the lathe because that's how we're going to finish these off because I can. If you don't have a lathe, you can very easily chuck these up in your cordless drill and sand them down to their one inch. But for me, I have the ability to turn them, so I'm going to. So the first step we're going to do here is I'm going to drill a quarter inch diameter hole in the center of each of these. And once I get those holes drilled, we're going to cut them out at the scroll saw. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to spin these down to round. Right now you can see they're kind of uneven. So we're going to throw on our face shield here and just turn these down to round. Now in case you're wondering how these are mounted on here, I have them on a universal pen mandrel. Um, a couple bushings here just to keep everything held together. So we're just going to take a measurement and see what they're at. We're at 1 and 11 64ths. So I'm just going to give myself a mark here on the side, somewhere close to the 1 inch mark. I think that's probably not bad there. And we'll just turn these down until we get them to their one inch in diameter. We've got them within a 32nd of an inch. So I'm going to give these a little sanding. That should bring down the uh, rest of the 32nd. And then we're going to take them over to the bench. Well, for once, I never broke one of these while I was turning them, so I have two spares. But you know what, for the amount of setup and the amount of time and the amount of stock that was wasted, um, these will come in handy. And in fact, if we look here on page five, I can probably turn these down a little further and use them for the drop down axle spacers that I need. So I'm just gonna place them off to the side here and we'll probably use those after. Now guys, use as many tools as you can to make glue ups easier. So what I'm gonna do is I have this brass pin. I use this brass pin for everything. It's quarter inch in diameter. I usually use it when I'm making wheels for models. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue to the end of our axles here. I'm not concerned about squeeze out at this point. And I'm going to put our brass pin inside our hole, just a little bit, and we're gonna slide our spacer down in place, just like that. And while we have it in place, we're gonna hold it just with the pressure of our finger. There's really no way to clamp this. And we're just gonna take a cotton swab dipped in a little bit of water 
take some of the water, squeeze it out of there. You don't want it too, too wet. And we're gonna clean up the squeeze out around this glue up. So we're gonna glue both of our axle spacers onto the end of our axle using that brass pin as a guide and to make sure everything aligns perfectly. Now you don't want to use a wooden dowel for that spacer or that alignment pin because of course it'll glue it in place and then it's useless to you. So what if you don't have a brass pin? Guys, you don't need one. That's just what I have. Um, it's just what I use. How about the drill bit that you drilled these quarter inch diameter holes from? You know it's going to fit in the pieces and it's not going to stick. The wood glue is not going to stick to that metal. So we're just going to sit that in place. Again, we're going to squish our spacer down there and clean up the squeeze out. Now guys, if you're going to use a drill bit, just be careful that you're not going to cut yourself on the edges of it, depending on how sharp your bits are. But well, we're going to make this hitch mount, guys. And we can see here that it is two inches by an inch and a quarter. So you want to make sure that the inch and a quarter is right. Because if we look here on our assembly diagram, I guess we'll call it very carefully, we can see the hitch mount right up here, which means it goes in between the two frame pieces. So the frame spacers are an inch and a quarter long. So if this is too long or too short, it's going to look strange being glued in there. It'll either leave gaps or it will prevent your spacers from making good connection on your frame. So we're going to cut this over at the table saw. It's a simple rip cut along with cutting it to length using your miter fence. And we're just going to do a little bit of layout on this here. Guys, I think I have explained quite enough how to measure to get these um, angles marked here. This one here starts at one inch down with that three eighths left at the bottom. I don't need to explain it again how to calculate where to put those marks for that three eighths. So guys, I'm gonna get that marked out on here. We're gonna cut off the majority of the material with the scroll saw and then sand up to the line using our belt sander. And then we can just give it a light sanding on our sanding block and be done with this piece. Well, I've gone over to the wood rack and found a piece of scrap walnut and I have ripped it to be three eighths of an inch by half an inch. It's about 18 inches long. Guys, incidentally, other than the 1 16th inch thick material that we milled earlier, every piece of this so far has been made from scrap pieces that are out of the wood rack. Just little small pieces that weren't usable for anything else. Anyway, there is three pieces here that I'm seeing that we can make with 3 8 by half inch stock. One of them being this hitch, the other one being the drive shaft front holder, and then there are of course the two drop down axle mounts. So we're going to start off with the hitch. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to cut this to its final length in this case of one and one eighth of an inch. While we're at it, guys, we might as well cut the drop down axle mounts as well. One and five eighths inch long. And uh, we're going to hold off on the drive shaft mount for now. Well, we're going to do some layout here on our hitch piece. The first thing we're going to mark is our hole. If we look here at the drawing, there is no dimensions for where the hole goes. But I have scaled off the drawing and you want to have the center of the hole centered on the 3 8 side and we'll measure it 3 16 of an inch back from the front edge of our piece. And guys, it's a simple matter of just center punching that and drilling the 1 8 diameter hole over at the drill press. Well, the next thing we can do is get a 3 8 inch circle template and we will just mark for the round off at the front end. We're not going to shape it just yet, but we can at least mark for it. And at this point, we want to mark for this dado. So we'll place a line one eighth of an inch in from the top edge and the bottom edge. And as well, we'll place a line seven sixteenths in from the front edge that we just rounded off. 
Now guys, there's lots of ways that you could cut this. You can cut it by hand. Uh, you could cut it with the bandsaw, but I'm just gonna take this over to the scroll saw. It's a simple cut. I'm just gonna cut that out to give us the shape. And once we get that cut out, we're gonna take this over to the belt sander. We'll round off that front edge. And when you get that done, you end up with a piece that looks just like this. Now we're gonna do the same thing with um, the drop down axle mounts. So the first thing we want to do here is I'm going to mark the cutout, or in this case, it's a rabbit on this piece. It is one eighth of an inch thick, and it looks like, according to the plans, it's five eighths of an inch deep. So we're gonna mark that on both of our pieces. But well, we now want to mark for our hole, and that will go in the opposite end on the half inch side and they actually give us the measurements for this one. So a quarter of an inch in from the end and centered on our half inch side. So at quarter inch, we can have the marks for our holes. And the last thing to mark for will be these chamfers here. And although again, it doesn't say it, I've measured off and they are one eighth of an inch in from each uh, end and they measure at a 45 degree angle. So that's the first thing we're going to do actually is we're going to cut those chamfers. Now this is actually a very lightweight cut. There is not much material being removed so there is not much resistance or pull on the piece. So you don't need much pressure to hold it. This is why I'm cutting it on the table saw, but I'm using a little mini awl to hold the piece in place against the fence and keep my fingers away from the blade. And in that way, I'll be able to cut the piece safely. Your next step will be to center punch and drill the 532nd diameter hole. And once you get that done, just like we did with the hitch, we're gonna take it over to the scroll saw and we're gonna cut this little rabbit out of our drop down axle mounts. And when you get that done, you'll have something that looks like this. So we're now going to move on to this last piece being the drive shaft front holder. And we're going to mark out for our dado that is in this on our half inch side and we will mark it uh, to be 5 sixteenths of an inch deep and 3 sixteenths wide. And much like the other cuts, we can take this over to the scroll saw and we'll cut that dado out. Now, truth be told, normally I would cut this to its 9 sixteenth of an inch uh, final length over at the table saw using that small parts cutting jig. But there's nothing wrong with getting a little miter box and cutting it that way as well. Guys, we have some small pieces here on print number two that need to be done, but I don't think we need a demonstration for them. Essentially, what we have here is this hitch bracket, which appears to be a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch by a half inch long with this 45 degree angle on the one end. Guys, cut a quarter inch by quarter inch length of wood and you'll cut the 45 first. From there, you can just use your miter box to cut it to length. Same process goes for these front leaf spring supports, guys. Cut the angles first on the 3 16 by 3 16 pieces. And then once you get those angles cut, you can very easily cut them in your miter box. Um, if you don't want to use the miter box, you can always use your small parts cutting jig. Well, making the tail light panel is really nothing special, guys. You want to rip your 1 16th inch stock. Again, I used the same method I used earlier to get the 1 16th inch walnut by trimming on the outside of the block. I got a piece trimmed off, cut it to length, ripped it, did some miters, and you're done. A little bit of sanding and you're finished up. We still have this dump box pivot block to make two of them. The only advice I can give you here, guys, is to cut the miters first. Get a much longer piece that is 5 eighths of an inch wide, 1 eighth of an inch thick, and cut the miters on either end. From there, you can mark out your radius and drill your holes, and it is a simple cut on the scroll saw. Cut outside the lines and sand up to the lines if need be. But I want to show you about the tail lights here. 
the taillights, guys, are a little different. And to make taillights, these are 3 8 of an inch in diameter. For me, I prefer to use thin stock and then cut them using a plug cutter like you see here. It is a great method to cut these things. They come out perfectly clean and a little bit of sanding really makes them look great. It's the small details like the taillights that can really throw a model off. If the taillights aren't perfectly circular or aren't perfectly aligned on that taillight panel, it's really going to look strange and it's going to really stick out. So use your best method to cut those. And I have found that the plug cutter does a fantastic job. But it looks like the last piece here that we need to make on this page, hopefully, <laughs> is this spring top. Guys, honest to goodness, I don't know what to tell you here. We are going to cut this from some quarter inch thick stock. We have a 7 16th radius or a 7 8 inch circle template. We're going to mark it out. We're going to cut that circle at the scroll saw and sand up to the lines. That's all there is to it for this piece, guys. Very, very simple stuff. Now, guys, for small pieces like this on a belt sander, it's probably best to attach them with some double-sided tape to a longer piece of stock. Gives you a much better grip on the piece and gives you a bit of distance from your fingers to the sanding belt. Well, I would really like to get the whole frame assembly done, but we don't have all the pieces made. So we're actually going to skip ahead to page five in the drawings, and we're going to start with the fuel tank here and the air tank. Now, both of these pieces, guys, are the same process. So we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you the process for the fuel tank, and you can just apply that to making the air tank. So what I have here is a couple pieces of maple because we need two tanks. They are roughly, roughly two inches by two inches and they're about three inches long. Gives us a little bit of wiggle room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the centers on these. We're gonna mount them between centers and then first and foremost, we're gonna turn these to round and get them to their, pretty close to their final dimension of one and a half inches in diameter. Well, we're pretty much at the final dimension there. It's still a little large, but that'll give us some wiggle room for sanding. So we now need to place some marks here. Now guys, as I said, this is three inches long. It's much longer than what we need. What we want it to be when we're finally done will be two and a quarter inches long. So I'm just gonna place a ruler up here we're going to place a mark right here um, and we'll mark our final length of our piece. And then we'll mark at the two and a quarter mark. There you go. And this will be our final dimensions of it once we're finished. So we want to mark our places now for our indentations. That's these ones here on the drawing. So we need to place the marks and much like I showed you guys earlier, they haven't given us where to start with these. They've only given us the width of it and the center width. So we can do some calculations and figure out where those marks go and we will place those marks on our cylinder. Now guys, for these indentations that we've marked right here and here, they are what looks like a sixteenth of an inch deep um, and three sixteenths of an inch wide. So I have this small little parting tool here and I'm just going to add those indentations to our fuel tank. And every so often you can just check your depth to make sure that you're not going too crazy and then finish it off.
and then we'll do the same on the opposite side. Okay, and with those done, we now want to take our parting tool and we're going to start here at our finished dimension lines and we're just going to carve it in a bit just to give us room to work to be able to finish off that outside curve that we can see here. Um, they list this as a 1 8 inch radius. So we're just going to give ourselves some room to work there with our parting tool. And then what you can do guys is do that 1 8 round over that they're talking about there. Clean it up, give it a sanding, and then we're going to take it over to the table saw, believe it or not, and trim off our excess pieces. And now you can repeat the process to make the second tank and the air tank. And once again, we are out of time on the show. Guys, a lot of small parts, a lot of little intricate parts, nothing really put together yet. This is the way these model builds go sometimes. It's not all about building a piece and suddenly you see the model start to emerge. Uh, it's a lot of patience, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of sitting back and looking at what you're doing and cutting the individual pieces and having the patience to not put it together just yet until you have the pieces that you need to make it a complete unit. So try not to jump the gun, guys. Just keep your pieces in a container or a little box and just keep plugging along and making these pieces. Guys, I've had a lot of questions, a lot of comments uh, from the previous show and the one prior asking about that small parts cutting jig. So while we don't have the time right now to do a build of that on the show, what I have done is I've drawn up a very simple drawing of it and put it on my website. So you can download that for free to make your own small parts cutting jig if you like. Just go to www.acutabovewoodworkings.com and click on the free pattern sections and you'll find it right there for free download. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope you're hanging in there and finding this informative and maybe learning a few techniques along the way. I hope you're going to try this one for yourself, guys. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.